Master, we thank you, God, for today. We thank you, Lord, for yet another opportunity to explore the Word of God, Lord, to dig even deeper into the well of our salvation. Tonight, Lord, as we embark upon this Bible study, we ask that your, your spirit, your uh, revelation would rest upon every word that's spoken. Lord, allow those that are in this room as well as those that might uh, partake of this study by reason of the Internet, allow them at this hour, God, to come to a full and complete revelation and understanding of your identity and truth. For, Lord, we know today that this revelation comes only from heaven. Lord, we can do our best to expound upon it by reason of the Word of God, which we believe is clear. But, Lord, without revelation, especially in light of deception and false doctrine, Lord, without that revelation from heaven, there will be no understanding. Open eyes, open minds, open hearts today to receive the truth. For we ask it today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God and amen. We are embarking upon a study of uh, the oneness of God in Christ Jesus. This is an issue in which there's a great deal of uh, confusion and misunderstanding. Uh, tradition has held the view that uh, for many, many centuries now that God exists as one. However, he exists as one in three persons, mm -hmm. namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three persons uh, which is the official definition of the, the Roman Trinity, uh, supposedly constitute one Godhead. Well, of course, having been born and raised in that movement myself, I'm well aware of the fact that, uh, I mean, having pastored even in Trinitarian circles, I'm well aware of the fact that the vast majority of people in that movement do not understand the concept of the Trinity. It's a very confusing doctrine, even to people who are in it. And uh, there, the reason that it's confusing is because it's unscriptural. It is not factual. God does not exist as three persons. There is one person of God. If you can apply the term person to God at all, uh, where God is a spirit, it's, his nature is spiritual. However, uh, when we understand that in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, God created man in his image. And according to the word of God, he breathed into Adam's nostrils, and Adam became a living soul. So right there, we have our first glimpse at the nature of God's person, or the nature of God. There are two elements that exist when you speak of a living soul. There is the soul, which is, in, in essence, it is the spiritual blueprint. And then you have the spirit. The Bible says that the spirit gives life to the soul. The soul, in turn, gives life to the body. You can have a body that has a soul, but their soul is dead. Because why? God breathed into Adam's nostrils, and he became a living soul. It is not the presence of our spirit that determines whether or not our soul is li alive. Mm -hmm. It is the presence of God's spirit in our soul, in our in our spiritual man, that determines whether or not our soul is alive. That's why we refer to those that are unsaved as being lost mm -hmm. uh, or dead in sin, mm -hmm. because they are their their spirit man, their soul does not have God's presence in it mm -hmm. as Adam did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, that soul is in fact dead. And this is why the New Testament plan of salvation includes receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because that is God re-breathing into Adam's nostrils and life being breathed back into our spiritual man by reason of the Holy Ghost baptism. So when you understand that God is one person, not three, that their, their original... Uh, aspect or the original description of God's person in the book of Genesis would be that of a living soul. Where do you get that conclusion? Again, I repeat, God made man, he made Adam in his image. Clearly states this. It also says that he breathed into Adam's nostrils and Adam became a what? 
a living soul. So therefore, if Adam was created in God's image, and Adam was created a living soul, then it only stands to reason that God would be a living soul. The soul is a spiritual body. The Apostle Paul tells us in the New Testament, there is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. The spiritual body is what we will occupy after the resurrection. After the Lord has come and redeemed his church, we'll be in our spiritual bodies. The scripture said that we'll be known after uh, redemption, the same as we were known in this life. So the soul resembles very much our physical person. That's why I call it the spiritual blueprint, mm -hmm. because it, it actually resembles very much. This is why when people claim to see, as it were, a ghost, uh -huh. what they're claiming to see, they can't see the person's spirit because you can't see spirit. Uh -huh. Spirit, according to the Word of God, the spirit is like the wind. Mm -hmm. You can't see the wind. Yeah. The Lord didn't say that the spirit, uh, to Nicodemus in, in John chapter 3, he didn't say the spirit is like a cloud where you can at least see a cloud. No, he mm -hmm. said it's like the wind. Yeah. So spirit is like wind. It's invisible. It's very real. You can sense it. You, you have a sense of its physical presence. Mm -hmm. However, it is not visible to the naked eye. Mm -hmm. But the soul is still spiritual in nature, mm -hmm. meaning it's non-carnal. It's not of the flesh. But the soul has a certain physical presence. Mm -hmm. This is why we can read in the Old Testament that Moses was hid in the cleft of the rock and God passed through the valley and allowed him to see Moses, that is, to see his backside. Mm -hmm. Because his soul, that spiritual person of God, mm -hmm. uh, the Lord said, you can't see me as I am, because if you were, you'd die. Mm -hmm. what, what would you see? If mm -hmm. God's a spirit, what would you see? You'd be seeing the soul of God is what you would in fact be seeing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so God initially created man in his image. Man was created a living soul. God, therefore, in the Old Testament, could be defined and described as a living soul. However, when man disobeyed God, he was then demoted in nature. He then took on flesh and blood, just like the animals of the field, which is why uh, the Word of God, uh, the Word of God, science even classifies us today as human beings, we're classified as animal. Mm -hmm. We're not mineral, we're not vegetable, right. we're animal. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very similar makeup to the animals, flesh mm -hmm. and blood and, and what have you. So therefore, when it became necessary for God to bring redemption to mankind, what He did, what the living soul of God, soul and spirit, those two aspects, what they did was, they took upon himself a physical form, which is the flesh, which was the fallen nature. That's why the Word of God declares that we're shaping in sin, we're born in sin, we're shaping in iniquity. Before we ever breathe our first breath, the, the minute we come into this world, we are in sin, period. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of doctrine out there. The Roman Catholic Church introduced the concept many moons ago of uh, age of accountability and mm -hmm. children know mm -hmm. they're there uh, they are without blame and blah 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 till they're mm -hmm. a certain age that's not scriptural mm -hmm. the fact that you are born in the flesh at all means that you are in fact in a sinful state you're in mm -hmm. a fallen state mm -hmm. if you were not fallen then you would have been born a living soul and you would not have had a physical body mm -hmm. okay God then took on that fallen nature in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why he had to be born of a virgin. This is why he had to come through the natural channels. The Bible said he became sin who knew no sin. Mm -hmm. He had to take on the fallen nature. Mm -hmm. You can't take on the fallen nature by just simply wrapping a fleshly robe upon yourself and then appearing on the scene as an mm -hmm. adult man. Mm -hmm. No, in order to take on the, the, the literal fallen nature of man, God had to come through the birth canal. Mm -hmm. He had to come through the birth process. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that in effect, he was born in man's fallen nature mm -hmm. by reason of his humanity, period. Mm -hmm. Immediately he was born into man's 
fallen nature. And yet the Bible says, and we're going to get into it momentarily, that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, meaning that he was absolutely perfect and without blame in the spirit. Jesus Christ, there was, not a, there was not one ounce of sin to be found in him, in spirit. But he became sin who knew no sin. 